Hey, it's your boy Sir It's Dragon, and welcome back to another edition of the Heaven's Monsters Podcast. With me always is Team Money, King T- Terrence. There you go. I've got to see if I can come up with a follow-up line like the king of, you said puppies now, but we got to see if we can follow up. Of uh, the universe? Mm-mm. No, lead into that title. A line? Ah, the, his majesty... King Terrence. There you go. A.K.A. His Majesty. There you go. That'll work. So, this time around, we're going to do two episode reviews of Impact Wrestling on May 10th and 17th. So, let's go ahead and do the 10th. Thank you. First up, we have the tag team match between LAX and Moose and Josh Alexander. One half of the North. Ultimately, sadly, for them, the LAX proved that they reign supreme in the tag team division. And there is very little sympathy for Joss Alexander for his tag team partner. And you'll find out in just a bit. Knockouts champion... Taya Valkyrie will then fight Madison Rain in a non-title match, abusing her 30-day um, title, re- uh, what do you call it? Title defense term. She doesn't have to defend her title every day. She can uh, defend her title within the 30-month limit. On commentary, we would have Tessa Blanchard, who is actually turning babyface now by the looks of it. And is having a Taya Valkyrie as the heel. She would comment what she thinks the whole time a match, and would have uh, Taya Valkyrie even get in her face several times in the match. But Taya Valkyrie does not interfere. But Taya Valkyrie not paying attention. Madison locks in the half Boston Crab. Causing Taya to quickly tap out out of her own accord. She literally taps out to fight another day since it wasn't a title match. Still taking the loss. So that goes on. That We would then have Jordan Grace versus uh, another competitor coming into NX, uh, the I was about to say NX, NXT. Yeah. Impact Wrestling. Alexa no, no, Nicole. Is that yeah. right? There you go. Thank you. And Jordan Grace makes quick work of her. Sadly, in the... Wait. Yeah, this would be mentioned later. Sadly, in the back, uh, we would have Kira Hogan turning heel on account that she doesn't feel uh, like having friends with Rosemary. Now she feels like she doesn't have friends at all. Even in Jordan Grace, who just got done with her match, would tell her that she wasn't a friend to her. She wasn't a friend to Rosemary. And if what happens with her and Sue Young, she doesn't care if she ends up like Allie. Ouch. That's cold. Because in her character, she got killed off, literally. So that's literally saying she doesn't care if she ends up dying. Ouch. In the back, we would have Alexander, I mean, Joss Alexander, assure his tag team partner, Ethan All Eagle, and that Ego, not Eagle, Ethan Page, that he will be in his corner for his match against Rob Van Dam, in which he was. Too bad it didn't matter because Van Dam wins the match. And Ethan Page feels like he's not done with Rob Van Dam. Michael Elgin and Josh Johnny Impact argue over who yeah in the uh, backstage we would have Michael Elgin the powerhouse Canadian versus Mayor of Slamtown Johnny Impact former Impact champion argue over who put Brian Cage in the hospital at Rebellion Mm. We then have a fatal four-way tag team match of the Dizzy Hit Squad. Desi. Desi. Oh, I keep saying it wrong. Desi Hit Squad, the Deaners, the Rascals, and 
Brent Banks and Adam Prince. Don't know those guys. Through one hell of a come behind shocking victory, the Dizzy Hit Squad ended up pinning, if I'm correct. Yep, Cody from the Deaners. That sucks. After that, LAX actually goes and gives a title shot, and they're in the club, the clubhouse of the Rascals. See, they had some wallpaper put up. That jungle look. See that with the pineapple. <laughs> Ultimately, though, they would just have a little conversation and LAX would give them some strong alcohol that the Rascals don't like. Like, bleh. They said, man, I thought we were with men. I don't know. I'm going to get it. Go get it. They would say. Finally, we would have the hype up between OVE and Tommy Dreamer's team. Well, really, it's Rick Swan's team, but Tommy Dreamer is speaking on their behalf. Saying that compared to back in the day, he is proud to see how people have come far putting their bodies on the line. Like he has put his body through so much pain and suffering to see himself in this day and age with people who are white, black, Asian, Latino, or in this case Latina, fight alongside each other in this industry against a, put, a bunch of people who would spit nothing but venom. Like O-V-E. So we would have an eight-man tag team match under O-V-E hardcore rules. And it was, just, it was just crazy. Legos were brought out again. Ladders were brought out. Tables were being put up and people were going through them. Chairs were swung. You name it. Ultimately... Yep. The match would sadly end thanks to the fact that Willie Mack gets Cactus Special Pile Driver, Cactus Jack to be precise, into the blocks of Legos on his head. Ooh, it could hurt. Ow. Can you imagine that? Having your head hit, land straight I into still, Legos? I still don't get why they use Legos, but it is this. Oh, you ever stepped on one of them? The one who had it worse was followed by. He walks around in the ring barefooted. He was having the momentum, especially when uh, uh, Fulton, yeah, Demon Fulton, I guess they call him or something. Oh. Fulton, uh, the freaking six foot man, jumps up the ladder and falls right into a Samoan drop by Fala Ba. Fala Ba catches him. But still had Legos under his feet, and he was like, ah, 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 and he landed his back, too. Oh, you ever had fat land on a pointy object before? Oh. I have. that. I hit a corner of a coffee table, a high coffee table. That was not fun. Ow. I can imagine him hitting all those Legos on his fat backside. Ow. And then you got Fulton, too. You had the brunt force of that. Damn. With the Sammy, uh, Sammy Callahan winning the match for his OVE team, he actually goes and this they're actually saying that now Sammy Callahan is done with Rick Swan, having the victory for his team of OVE. The baby faces didn't get the win, but at least we have recognition that they're done. I can confirm that after I watched this week's episode of impact on the 17th which we'll be getting to in just a bit while he's looking that up let's do the roll call as usual i want to give a shout out to our boys xavier hill and mike henry a link to their youtube pages will be in the descriptions down below if you want to check them out by all means go check them out just recently me on xavier on xavier's video youtube pages we did a Three types of M&M's re uh, review rant, as he calls it, with me, Andre, and Xavier. 
to, uh, with the new hazelnut, not hazelnut, yeah, hazel cream. Hazel cream, oh, I forgot to bring that for you. I wanted you to try these. The non-peanut hazel spread, it's pretty good. The English toffee, not coffee, that's a tea, toffee. It's like a candy, candy nut. So it's a peanut brand. And then finally, the Mexican jalapeno M&M peanut. That was spicy. So go check out that video on Xavier Hills. And by all means, also check out Mike Henry's. As also, a shout out to our remaining Heaven Monsters podcast group. Renee, Farrell, Andre, Chris Petrie, and Delvin. You got it? Mm -hmm. We'll be right back. I'm covering to see if this is it. Okay, yeah, this is it. Here we go. The match, the the night would start off on the 17th of May for Impact Wrestling with a 10-woman battle royale. Over the top what? Battle royale. Excuse me. I had a burp. In which case, Gilberti comes out and rants on these women saying, why are these women even wrestling? Don't they know that you're downgrading television with these women? Not to mention the only significant is if all these women were, if it's a bra and panties match. In which case, please keep your cl uh, clothes on. You're not that, that good looking. Oh, and all the women just kicked his ass. He then goes to commentary for the match and rants. Just, just. There, his other two commentators were actually saying, "Go back to nine, uh, 1995," and Josh goes and says, "Oh, that's when he was relevant." <laughs> the match would then go on to have the final five women who are significantly iconic within Impact Wrestling. We have the Smoke Show, Scarlett Bordeaux, Tessa Blanchard. Kira Hogan, jo Jordan Grace, and uh, damn it, Madison Rain. Then, in the commentary, these women don't know, while they're eliminating each other down to Kira Hogan and Tessa Blanchard, freaking Gilbert Ger uh, Birdie, ugh, I already fucked up his name, Says that he's not eliminated. And he's like, what do you mean? You're not eliminated. You're not a part of the match. My name is on the list. Check it. And apparently he is. He is a part of the match for some reason. We had ourselves a freaking knockouts battle royale. Yeah, that's what it is. Knockouts battle royale. And Tessa Blanchard would be technically the winner. But the bell didn't ring. Everybody's like, what the hell? And here comes Birdie clotheslining her and then throwing her out of the ring to get the win. Tessa Blanchard is chasing his ass and he's got a mic saying, I guess I'm the knockout battle royale winner. <laughs> they didn't show anything after that, but she was chasing his ass out of the stadium. I was like, damn. Gilberti, you fucking asshole. Backstage, we would have Michael Elgin talking trash about what he did to Willie Mack last week when he actually jumped him in the parking lot and slammed, power of bomb slammed him against a tr uh, moving truck. Ultimately, put him in a hospital. By having his Willie Mack's name, Willie in Pacific, come out of his mouth and talking trash about it, his dear friend Rick Swan would come out to him, smack the taste out of his mouth for saying that I'll put you in the hospital with your boy, Willie Mack. And a match for that night would commence for against Rick Swan, the X Division champion, against the Canadian muscle powerhouse, Michael Elgin. Big Mike, as he's also being known. And we got Sue Young versus Rosemary in a demon collar match. Basically, it's a collar chain match. And they definitely did. They were spewing uh, not once, but twice for both of them. Red Mist for Sue Young and Green Mist for Rosemary. One time they were just spewing it singularly when they were reaching out to each other after dropping the chain. And then they just spit in the air simultaneously. Like, 
the referee is like, what the hell? After that, uh, after a while the match kept going, they were just choking each other, hanging each other, whipping each other, rolling the chain and punching each other. Sue Young would actually have the chain cut off at one point. And she's still hanging on to the damn thing, courtesy of the rules of the match. Try to hit the red mist in Rosemary's face. She dodges, hits her. She actually gets that rag, that bloody nasty thing in her mouth. And she wraps wild that things in her mouth to punches her and then spits in her face with the green mist once again and then hits her what looks to be like an F5 and gets the pin. And then she straps that collar, taking her from the ring, and just dragging her like this. And she's like, and she's making that sad looking face like someone helped. No one's helping her. Not even her undead bridemaids. Which means... By that show, Rosemary just acquired as her new minion or slave the undead bride, Ro Sue Young. <laughs> See, there it is. Wait for it to focus. There you go. Is that green mist? And this was a no disqualification term match, so it was legal. Also, they were mentioning uh, uh, the guy who originated that in Japan. You know who that guy? He's going to be... Okay, Muda. Yeah, Muda is going to be coming on June 6th to Impact. Excuse me, had a burp. And they're going to showcase him. He's a legend, so they're honoring him. Oh, fun fact. Courtesy of teaming up with... Booker T's Ring of Honor, July 16th. They are coming to Houston, Texas before July 17th in Dallas, Texas, Slammiversary for a little special. <laughs> Too bad. It might be in that stadium mall over there, uh, you mean, which is. Is reality of wrestling. Yeah, reality of wrestling. You said what? Ring of Honor. Oh, sorry. Thank you. Uh -huh. ROW. With the women division are called Diamonds. I used to watch it and I stopped because it didn't come on TV no more. And the sites I go to don't have it for me to download, which sucks. Mm, that sucks. Uh, you can watch it on YouTube, though. And you can watch uh, Booker T's podcast. Recently, he just uh, had Hulk Hogan. I showed you that one, right? Yeah. Did you enjoy it? Yes, yeah, I saw it. Oh, hell yeah. He even talked about that one where he said the N-word. Because he thought that was the end of his career. And Hulk Hogan's like, I didn't take no offense to that. I don't even know why was that such a bad thing. I've heard that so many times in the streets and on TV. I thought it was okay. And then I learned for later on it, uh, it wasn't. So that's good of Hulk Hogan at the time. He's still cool about it. Despite when he said that word, Booker T's like, I know how you feel. I made that mistake too. And I can sympathize with you. <laughs> that was good. Uh, other people don't like that. Mm -hmm. Still don't. Anyway, next up we would have a one-on-one -on -one with Madman Fulton. That's what he's called. Not Demon. He's called Madman Fulton. With Sammy Callahan as his uh, dog owner or something. Because he's like a freaking rock water. D uh, Madman Fulton. And he whoops this guy, Randy Swan like his nun did. We, uh, then we have the match with Killer Cross versus Eddie Edwards. And ultimately, Killer Cross wins the match, but then he straps Eddie Edwards to the middle rope with zip ties. And he breaks Kenny the Kendall stick right in front of him. To, to you and me, it's just an object for Eddie Edwards. It's actually a friend, a family member. And he's screaming, Kenny. See? There it is. Poor Eddie Edwards. He lost a dear friend. That's gonna be some that's gonna be some shit to deal with later. We also have a workout video for the Rascals training up because they lost their chance at fighting the LAX. They're trying to have each other eat some chicken. They said it was good for them. I'm like, I don't wanna eat that. And one of the guys said he turned vegan. I saw you eating a Cheeto, I'm like that. That was that was last week. 
<laughs> we would then have the last match, and there you go, that's it. X Division Champion Rick Swan versus Big Mike, Mike, Con uh, Michael Canellas. Michael Elgin, sorry I said Michael Canellas. Both named Mike. In which case, the match goes back and forth between Powerhouse and Striker High Flyer. In which case, former Impact Champion Johnny Impact interferes and attacks Rick Swan. Wait, no, no, no. That's not right. Michael Elgin, outside the ring, is told by the rest to put him in the back into the ring. He grabs a ref and then shoves him, ultimately get him disqualified. He continues the beatdown on Rick Swan, and Willie Mack comes in trying to defend his buddy. Everybody thought he was in the hospital. Nope, he's healthy as a, as a, as a gazelle, I guess, because he's doing them high-flying moves, just coming in there, whooping uh, Mike Michael Elgin's ass. But then Johnny Impact showed up, this is the part that I said, and attacks Willie Mack and says, uh, take you to Slam Town. And nobody knows why, but those two are just staring at each other and either they're working together or not is unconfirmed. Because the show then goes to black and that's the end of the show, ladies and gentlemen. What do you think? What was the highlight of those two, show, two uh, episodes? I don't know. I don't like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But wait, uh, from what I told you, what was the most entertaining thing? I guess uh, the, Robin, the Robin Dam Matt Cardi thing. Ah, see, I barely talked about that. Did you love Ram Van Dam winning? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't much care for the other ones. I like the rock party thing. Mm hmm. Next week, Rob Van Dam in the hardcore city where ECW reigned supreme. What was it, see? Uh, Chicago. It was uh, Chicago. That's where they're going because he's going to fight his old time friend, Tommy Dreamer, next week. Rob Van Dam versus Tommy Dreamer. Oh, yeah. So that said, ladies and gentlemen, that was the end of the video. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. Hit the subscribe button if you like the content. And hit that notification bell for the next Heaven's Monsters podcast. Peace out, y'all. Bye.